اللهم عنا على صيامه وقيامه وجنبني من هفواته وأثامه وارزقني ذكرك بدوامه بتوفيقك يا هادي المضل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Indeed, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He deserves to be praised. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send His salutations and blessings and peace upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his family and companions. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made the days of the year equal, nor has He made all of the timings the same. Rather, Allah has preferred certain timings over others and He has blessed certain periods over other periods. And in this is a great blessing from Allah. Because if all of the time had been the same, if all of the days had been the same, if all of the periods had been the same, then we would not be enthused at certain times of the year over others. Rather, we would have the same amount of energy throughout the entire year. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen certain days over others is a time for us to, to be extra good on those days. And of course, of the days that Allah has chosen is Friday. Friday is the most blessed day of the week. And of the months that Allah has chosen is Ramadan. Ramadan is the most blessed month of the year. But do you know that there are some days that are even more blessed than Friday? And in fact, even more blessed than Ramadan. Yes, indeed. There are days that are more blessed than the days of Ramadan. Do you know what those days are? Those days are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And this is a time period, my dear brothers and sisters, that many people of the Muslim Ummah are unaware of the superiority of these 10 days. Our Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that there are no days of the year that are more beloved to Allah that a person does good in those days than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. A man said, O Messenger of Allah, even jihad, Allah does not like jihad even more than He likes these uh, doing good deeds in these 10 days. And the Prophet said, even jihad, except if a man leaves with all of his property and all of his, his belongings and money and life, and he dies a martyr in the battle, that is the only thing that is more beloved than a person who is practicing and praying and being a good Muslim for these 10 days. So these 10 days are the most blessed days of the year. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, there are not any days of the year that are holier than these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Therefore, increase in doing good deeds to Allah and increase in saying Allahu Akbar and saying Alhamdulillah and saying La ilaha illallah. So increase in doing your dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these 10 days are the holiest days of the year. And Allah swears by these days in the Quran when Allah says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ Allah swears by Fajr and then the 10 nights or the 10 days. And scholars of, uh, of Islam have said, the 10 nights that Allah swears on are these nights or the days of Dhul Hijjah. Now somebody might ask, which is more holy or, or blessed? The days of Dhul Hijjah or the days of Ramadan? And the response is that, the day timings of Dhul Hijjah, the first 10, are actually more blessed than the day timings of Ramadan. But the last 10 nights of Ramadan are more blessed than the, last, uh, than the first 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah. Hence, the 10 days and nights of Ramadan and Dhul Hijjah, and when we say Ramadan, we, we mean the last 10. When we say Dhul Hijjah, we mean the first 10. They are all blessed, day and night. They are all holy. They are all blessed. But the nights of Ramadan are holier than the nights of Dhul Hijjah. And the days of Dhul Hijjah are more blessed than the days of Ramadan. So we should increase our good deeds in these days. What are some of the good deeds that we can do in these days? Well, the first good deed that we can do is Hajj and Umrah. Hajj can only be done during these days, right? This is, these are the days of Hajj. These are the days of Hajj, when the, the Hujjaj all congregate on the 7th, 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the Arimina, Muzalifa, Arafat. These are the days of Hajj. And before them, people come to do Umrah. And so, this is the best deed that we can do. The Prophet wasallam said, when you do an Umrah, and then you follow it up with an Umrah, the two Umrahs cancel out all of the evil done in between. And the Prophet wasallam said, those who do Umrah and, and, and Hajj continuously, it is as if their 
sins fall off of them like a furnace destroys the, 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 the evil in metal ore. You throw in raw ore and the furnace gets rid of all of the impurities. Similarly, Hajj and Umrah gets rid of all of your impurities. The second good deed that we can do is to fast in these days. And fasting is a very blessed thing to do in any time of the year, but especially in this time of the year. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, fasting on the day of Arafat will be credited with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiving one's sins of the previous year and the following year. Now this is only for the non-hujjaj. If you're doing hajj, you don't fast. If you're not doing hajj, then you fast on the day of Arafat and that is the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. You're supposed to fast on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. It will forgive your sins of the year before and the year after. The third thing that we can do is extra dhikr, takbir, saying Allahu Akbar and saying La ilaha illallah and saying Alhamdulillah. And in fact, the Sahaba would be so eager to say these things that they would say them out loud even in the marketplaces and especially after the prayers and especially after the prayers uh, for three days after Eid. After every single prayer, we should raise our voice out loud and we should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But many Muslims forget even the 10 days before Eid where we should praise Allah, the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And this praise is an unconditional praise, meaning that we don't praise uh, at congregated times, we don't praise together, we just praise whenever we want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, some of the scholars, as we said, would praise Allah in the marketplace, praise Allah wherever they're walking out loud during these 10 days. Another thing that we can do is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our sins. Again, repentance is something that we should do all the time. But especially in these 10 days, we should repent to Allah. And remember that a true repentance means you feel guilty, you want to give up the sins, you leave the sins that you're doing, you seek Allah's forgiveness, and you turn over a new leaf and you become a better person. Another thing that we can do, the fifth thing that we can do, is to do extra voluntary deeds of prayer and charity and reading Qur'an. So these are things that we should do again throughout the year. But during this time, even more so, we should do them. Extra prayer and extra Qur'an and extra dhikr. And especially the tahajjud prayer would be a very blessed thing to do in these 10 days. Another blessed, blessed act that we can do, which is encouraged specifically within these 10 days, is to sacrifice an animal for the sake of Allah and give some of the meat to the poor. We may use some of it and we may give some of it to family and friends. And this is called the udhiya or the sacrifice. Now, the udhiya, some of the scholars say it is obligatory if you can afford it and others say it is recommended. Either way, why should you deprive yourself of this blessing? You rather, every single Muslim who is capable of affording an animal should try his or her best to uh, sacrifice an animal for the sake of Allah and distribute the meat to the poor. And one animal suffices a family. And if you want a larger animal such as a camel or a cow, you may get together seven families and then uh, do that. The Prophet ﷺ said, that uh, whoever makes a sacrifice, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the amount of sins on the hair of the animal, the amount of sins will be forgiven for you. And the Prophet wasallam would make a sacrifice every single year at this time. The sacrifice should be made after uh, the 10th day of, uh, of the Hijjah, meaning after Salatul Eid, it may be made on the 10th or 11th or 12th or 13th. Any of these days, the sacrifice may be made. Now, a point of caution. If you do want to sacrifice an animal, then you should avoid trimming your nails and cutting or clipping your hair or shaving your hair, avoid it to show respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoid doing this for the 10 days before the sacrifice. The ninth thing that you should do is that you should pray the Eid prayer. And the Eid prayer is obligatory. It is not just sunnah. It is obligatory on every single Muslim, male or female. Every single Muslim should and must go to the Eid prayer. Therefore, if you are living in a culture that does not uh, allow you to take off for uh, generally speaking, try your best to get off on the day of Eid. And if you're living in an Islamic land, then Alhamdulillah, Eid prayer is a public holiday. So an Eid prayer is a mandatory thing that is required upon all Muslims on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. And the final thing that you should do is that you should appreciate the blessings of Allah and come close to Him during these 10 days through each and every deed that you can do. 
intentions and actions and thoughts and prayer and forgiveness. In other words, appreciate the blessings of Allah upon you and thank Him for what He has given you and seek forgiveness for all that you have fallen short. These are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Take advantage of them and try your best to earn Allah's pleasure through them. وَآخْرُ دَعْوَانَا And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh اللهم عنا على صيامي وقيامي وجنبني من هفواتي وأثاني وارزقني ذكرك بدوامي بتوفيقك يا هاني